For this video, I wanted to look at some basic rod wrapping or whipping techniques. Whipping is really the main part of turning a blank into a finished fishable rod. There are two parts to that process and the first is actually getting some thread onto the blank and that's what I'll be covering in this video. The second part is applying epoxy resin to the thread which effectively turns it into a reinforcement for the resin. The result is an incredibly strong collar with some flexibility. Here in the factory for normal production this would be done with a blank fixed in a wrapping machine. But I'm going for a simpler approach. I've got the butt section of a carp rod here that I've mounted into a cardboard box that I've cut a couple of V slots into just to give me some support. I've got all the tools and materials and threads laid out in front of me where I can easily access them. And I'll kind of explain them as I go, but I will post a list of these in the description below. I suppose the most important bit of kit is the thread. This is a giant kind of production spool but they are available in smaller sizes. It also comes in a couple of different grades. There's an A and a D grade, oddly no B and C grade, but it's the D grade we use most often, which is the heavier of the two. The A grade tends to be used for more decorative wraps and also for lighter things like fly rods. The threads themselves can be made from a range of materials, but nylon and polyester are probably the most common. I'm gonna get started with the most basic type of wrapping and that's a straight decorative wrap to the end of this rod. This is a short or abbreviated grip and the wrapping's gonna come back from this about 10 millimeters. Later when that's covered with epoxy, it's gonna make a smooth transition from that handle back down to the blank. I'm gonna start by measuring out the length of that whipping on the blank, so 10 millimeters, about 3 8 of an inch. I'm just using an ordinary pencil here and I find if I turn that, I can really pick that mark out in the light. But there are specialist rod marking pencils available in different colors. To make the thread easier to use, I've got a plastic bag that I can pop it into and I'm gonna drop this on the floor just really to keep any dirt off it. I've got some one inch masking tape here and I'm gonna stick this end down to the blank a couple of inches up from where I need to start whipping. If I turn the rod away from me and take quite a sharp angle, I can bring that up to the handle and then turn it to straighten up. I'm right-handed, so I'm using my right hand to guide it, but also adding some tension by pinching the line between my fingers as I push the rod away with my left hand. How much tension is really a difficult question. There needs to be enough on there to hold the wrapping together while the epoxy is applied so it really doesn't unravel. But also that pressure needs to be consistent right the way throughout the wrap. If I carry on turning, I can bring that line back over itself and I'm gonna do that about six times. As I come round to it, I can move the line angle out a bit and then take it back in just to avoid going the wrong way. I can then just put my finger on the line to keep hold of that tension. And if I fish out my scalpel blade, I can trim that first line I laid down as close to the wraps as possible. Then I can peel that tape away and that thread should come with it. I'm gonna be a little bit careful again until I've gone past the tag end of that thread. The main section's a little easier. I've got my line at a slight angle. And as I turn the blank, I want that line to ride down the last wrapping into place, almost like a, a wire on a winch. And that should keep the wraps nice and tight together. If I take it too far to the handle, it will ride up over and go backwards, but I can always just pull back a little and start again. If the wraps start to show some gaps, I can wind back again or use that line to push the last wrappings up. So I'm just gonna bring it a couple of millimeters short of that mark and then I can just hold it again with my finger and keep that tension. I've got a little loop of line here. This is just ordinary braided fishing line and I've tied a double overhand loop knot in it and then just snipped it free. I can trap this underneath the line against the wrapping and then continue on just taking a bit more care as I'm passing it. So 
So I've gone over my pencil mark and again, I'm gonna trap that line to hold the tension. I've got some very sharp thread snippers here and I can just cut the end of the line free now. I'm gonna thread that tag end through that little loop and then pull that loop up so it's trapping the thread against the wrapping. I'm just gonna give that tag a tug again just to put a bit more tension in it and then I can pull it through. To cut that flush, I can put a bit of tension on it and then with a the scalpel blade pressed flat against the wraps, just nip it off. I'm gonna give that a quick blast with the lighter just in case there's any bits of fluff sticking up. So I'm gonna come back with a plastic ruler and use this as a kind of burnishing tool just to flatten the threads. This should fill out any tiny gaps between the threads. And finally, I'll give it a blast with a lighter again, just in case I've stirred up any fluff. So that's a, a basic plain whipping done. It all looks pretty uniform. There's nothing sticking up that's gonna poke its way into the epoxy finish. I'm gonna add a bit of metallic tip into this. I've got some thread here, this is an A grade, and it goes on in a very similar way. Again, I'm gonna take the end down to the blank and come up to that start point. I'm just gonna put down two wraps over that thread and then again, hold it for the tension. Because this is gonna be a short wrap, I'm gonna slide my loop in here. Then I'm only gonna give it just another five wraps. Again, holding down for the tension, I can snip that line and then thread it through the loop. I'm pulling that loop up and again, I'm gonna give the line a couple of tugs just to put some tension back in. And then I can just pull it through. I'm gonna cut the original thread as close to the wrappings as I can get. And with the blade almost flush to the wrappings, I can snip off that tag. A quick blast with the lighter should clean up the end. And as this is only a few wraps and a bit delicate, I'm gonna use the ruler to push it all up against that plain whipping. That's the job done. It's really the epoxy that's gonna transform that into a nice bit of bling and also make up that transition from the handle to the rod blank. It's worth saying there's lots of variations in the techniques used for this and every rod builder will have their own way of working and methods that come out of their experience. Earlier this week we had a custom rod builder come into the factory who's been building rods, well, for most of his life and it was really great to see the way that he works which is basically in his hands. For his own approach he doesn't use any masking tape or the little loop tool for finishing off. Instead, he uses a kind of specialised knot, which you'd probably take a whole video on its own to explain. In the next video in this series, we're going to look at taking that basic whipping technique and using it to secure an eye to the blank. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new videos.